Let's talk about double entry accounting. The basic unit of accounting is an account. In accounting, an account is anything you want to keep separate track of. Examples of accounts are cash. You want to keep track of how much cash you have on hand. Accounts receivable. Accounts receivable represents money that is owed to the business. Accounts payable, which represents money that is owned to the business. Land, equipment, vehicles, all of these are accounts. In accounting, all accounts fit into one of the following five categories. An account can be either an asset. An asset is something of value that is owned or controlled by the organization. The key to something being considered an asset is that it provides future benefits to the company. So therefore, it'll provide benefits in future accounting periods. A liability is a debt of money, property, or services. So a debt can arise even if you've taken money in advance and need to perform services in advance, or if you promise to pay property in the future. An account can also be an equity account. That's the ownership interest, but really the only accounting definition of equity is assets minus liabilities. Think about it. If the owner wanted to go out of business, what would they do? They would sell the assets for cash and then use the cash to pay off the liabilities. Whatever is left over would be for the owner to keep, so therefore equity is defined as assets minus liabilities. Now we also have revenues. Revenues are resource inflows from already providing a service or giving up goods, but we're not going to sell anything until Chapter 6. So for right now, the key to something being considered a revenue is you must have already performed a service. Whether you get the cash or not at that time is completely irrelevant, but at the time that you perform a service, a revenue exists. And finally, expenses are the cost of producing revenues. The key to something being considered an expense is that it is all used up to produce income. Now we're going to go into transactions. In accounting, a transaction is anything financial that happens between the company and an outsider to the company. Now what we do with double entry is we are going to record transactions. So, let's go. Under the double entry system, each transaction will change a minimum of two accounts. Many of the transactions that we're going to study will change exactly two accounts, but it can be three, four, five, or more. The key is going to be balancing, which I'll get to at the end. But if you analyze a transaction and you find that only one account has changed, you are incorrect. Okay, the two sides of the transaction, I call the what and the why of the transaction. The what is always about money. So whenever you think about a transaction, think of Jerry Maguire, show me the money. So first of all, a transaction might call to pay or receive cash. So therefore, the first account that changes would be cash. But we're studying accrual accounting this semester, which is in accordance with GAAP, I have another recording about the difference between cash and accrual based accounting, but that's going to come up in Chapter 2. But under accrual based accounting, we want to record receivables. It's important for our business to record when somebody owes us money. We also want to record payables when we owe somebody money. So, therefore, the first account that will change is either cash or if we don't pay or receive money, then accounts receivable because somebody will owe us money or accounts payable will owe somebody money. Then the other side of the transaction describes it. I call it the why. So if we spent money, what did we spend it on? Did we spend it on land, which is an asset, or salaries, which are an expense? If we received money, where did it come from? Did the owner put money into the business? Did we make a revenue? Or did we sell some land? So here we go. 
There are three steps to analyzing a transaction. Once we go through the three steps, we're going to go through analyzing the transactions of net solutions. So, the three steps to analyzing a transaction. Step number one, figure out the two accounts that will change. So remember, the first account is going to be either cash, accounts receivable, or accounts payable under um, accrual-based accounting, and then we have to figure out the why as well. Then in step two, you're going to decide whether each account will either increase or decrease as a result of the transaction. Realize that you can have two increases, two decreases, or an increase and a decrease. I urge you not to think of positive and negative. Think, are we going to have more of this or are we going to have less of it? It'll make it much, much easier. And then in step three, we're going to balance the transaction around the equation assets equal liabilities plus equity. That equation is always in balance. It's known as the basic accounting equation. We start off with the business with zero assets, zero liability, and zero equity, and we are always in balance. If we are not in balance, there is an error in the box. So for example, to balance, if we increase an asset, then we increase a liability, we would still stay in balance. Or if we increase one asset and decrease another asset, we would still be in balance. Or if we decrease an asset and decrease a liability, or increase an asset and increase an equity. So those are some examples of how we can balance. So now let's go into net solutions. So in order to prepare the financial statements, what we're going to do is the first thing that we have to do, <coughs> excuse me, is our income statement. The income statement is revenues minus expenses. So you see right over here, I have the income statement. So all we have to do is write it out in our nice format. We show our revenues and expenses, and we take our revenues and subtract our expenses. We then calculate our net income. Then we move on to the statement of owner's equity. We start off with the beginning balance in Chris Clark Capital. Chris Clark Capital increases by the owner investment, which was $25,000, the first transaction. The owner's equity increases by net income, so that's why the revenues and expenses are here. Revenues minus expenses get added to Chris Clark owner's equity. Notice how the net income of 3050 matches the net income of 3050. We show the owner withdrawal, and as of November 30th, Chris Clark has $26,050 of capital. Then we move on to the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, we show the assets on the left-hand side. As of the end of the month, it was cash of 5900 supplies of 550 land of 20,000 for total assets of 26,450 on the liabilities we only have one accounts payable $400 and owner's equity Chris Clark Capital 26050 notice that matches our statement of owner's equity so we have total liabilities and equity of $26,450 then finally, the final step is to do a statement of cash flows. Going back to the bank blank net solutions, excuse me, to do our statement of cash flows, right over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six cash receipts and disbursements that we have to account for. If the cash was paid or received from a revenue, an expense, or a current asset, for example, supplies, accounts receivable, or a current liability like accounts payable, then it would be considered an operating cash flow. If we pay the money for a long-term asset like land, it's considered an investing cash flow. And if it goes to equity, so for example, the capital and the drawing would go to financing. So over here on the 
financial statements. All we've done, the cash received from customers is operating. Cash paid for expenses and accounts payable is operating. So we calculate our net cash flow from operating. Investing was only the cash payment for the land. And financing, we have the investment and the withdrawal by the owner. And notice that the change in cash reconciles to the ending cash balance on the net solutions balance sheet. So there we are, double entry bookkeeping over to how we use this is called a one right system. And finally, to produce the financial statements from our one right system.